Hello everyone, so I thought that today I would just do a very simple life update vlog day with me because as you know I'm moving house and it's been crazy busy here so this is really the best way for me to make sure that I get an episode out to you this week so I can keep in touch. Now you may have seen that I've been lying a bit low on Instagram and other social media I haven't really posted this week and that's because I have obviously been busy packing but also I've been ill and I'm never ever ill so this has really knocked me off my feet um, I've had like a, a sore throat and I felt very very weak just drained of energy and I think it's because obviously I'm very stressed about moving and uh, I think when you're stressed, your immune system is not in its best shape, so it's kind of got to me and I've be, made myself a little bit ill. But I'm fine. It's nice to be back recording something for you. So I've just got out of the shower and started my day, and this is pretty much a normal day for me in terms of getting ready. I sit here in my bedroom in front of this mirror, and I've just had a shave. Uh, when I did my last video about getting ready for a night out, I had a few questions about how often do I shave. I usually shave about three times a week. I do like to have a very smooth look, and I find that if I if I don't if I don't let it grow long enough, this stubble, then it will really shred my face to pieces. So I have to usually wait about two days, and then I can have a shave. So after I've had a shave, I use this uh, Shine Control Daily Moisturizer from Boots. It's got witch hazel, so it's very very soothing. Um, it feels very cooling on the skin after you've had a rough shave. So I just use some of this and apply this onto my skin. Ah, it's so cooling, so refreshing after a shave. But I do use this every day as well. I find it's a very good base for the skin and it really just stops me from breaking out. And I used to have a few years ago a bit of an issue with my eyelids where I had this kind of eczema and this is the cream that stopped that so I like to use this every day just to prevent that so yeah I'm just applying that onto my face and neck so yes it's been <laughs> a very stressful time I've managed to find a flat I'm moving in next week so hopefully next week's video will be me showing you my new place which is going to be very exciting but it was all last minute. Uh, the rental market here in Edinburgh is very, very strong. We've got a lot of students who are looking to start university in September. So I've been battling with all of them to get the best flats and uh, it's not been easy. But last week I viewed something, it was perfect, put the offer in, it was accepted and it was very, very all smooth. So I think that it was meant to be. So yeah, finally got somewhere and I'm very, very excited to share. I'm not going to be putting any makeup on because I don't usually wear makeup every day. So this is the real me. This is the real skin. Uh, the only thing that I do every day is fill in my brows because as you can see, they're quite gappy. So yeah, I've put on the moisturizer. I'm going to let that just sit in for a little bit. And then after that, I use this uh, Fenty Skin um, SPF. I like this. This is by Rihanna. And uh, it's one of the only... SPFs that don't irritate my eyes and my skin so yeah this has worked very well and I also like this very cool bottle which just twists like this and also it's refillable if I can just get it out oh yeah so it's re you take it out like that and it refills so you only need to buy this once and then you just buy the refills so I like it and this is SPF 30 so while I'm waiting for my moisturizer to soak in a little bit I'm gonna start just on my brow and you've seen me do this before but this is part of an everyday routine so I'm just gonna do a very quick brow and just starting on the outside and filling in these gaps here yeah. so it's been very strange not to post on social media I kind of feel like I've been well I've been posting on Instagram for about seven years almost every day at least on stories as well so not to post for a week has been strange because I'm used to having a lot of interaction with people on Instagram who send me direct messages who comment on pictures so it's been a lonely week but I just didn't really have anything to post so I'd rather not post anything 
than post something that is not going to bring joy or happiness, at least. So I've kind of stayed away. Hopefully this week I'll have a lot to share. Obviously moving out is going to be busy, but also brings a lot of interesting things that are going on. So I'll be back to regular posting then. And you can probably hear that my voice is a bit gravelly and deeper than usual. I think that is my sore throat. Uh, I really did believe that I had COVID. I thought, oh gosh, I've got COVID. But no, I haven't got COVID. I'm fine. So that, that's it. Brow done. Brows done. Very simple. I have put on this Fenty skin. I put it on about 15 minutes ago because I wanted to let it soak in and then I can start my day. The last thing that I use, this is a new thing that I've been using, it's called Mario Badescu, I think. That's how you pronounce it, and it's a facial spray with aloe vera, herbs, and rose water. And I find it's just very refreshing. I'm very into these face sprays, as you know, so I just like to spray that all over. Oh, so refreshing. I use a lot. <laughs> and just let it soak. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I am... Um, I've been making a smoothie every morning for breakfast, kind of an immune-boosting smoothie. So I'm going to make that, share it with you, and then we'll take Sophie for a nice walk in the sun. This immune-boosting smoothie has just five ingredients, but it is so tasty and perfect for giving a boost. We've got fresh orange juice, which is a great source of vitamin C, then fresh lemon juice to help promote hydration. I'm also adding fresh ginger, a powerful antioxidant which helps fight cold and flu viruses. These berries are packed full of flavour and vitamin C, whilst the Greek yoghurt will add richness and flavour to this beautiful smoothie. So after that dog walk, I did plan to go home and film some more things for this video so that it was a proper uh, life update, vlog, day in the life kind of video. But I got back home and I started to do some tasks in the house. And then I started to feel really, really ill again. And last night I had the worst night's sleep ever. I had a, a fever, a temperature, I was shivering all night in bed, just feeling totally awful. So. All of the plans that I had were out the window. So it's 24 hours later, I'm still feeling a bit shivery and a bit awful, but I really wanted to complete this video in some way because I promised myself that when I started this channel, I would upload every week and never miss a week. So I thought that it was best just to put something out here. So this is the video this week. And I'm sorry that it's not a really good one, but uh, I did try my best and hopefully next week I'll have a lot more fun stuff to share. So before I go, I just thought that I would end by sharing uh, some books that I've been reading. I know a few of you do like me to recommend books and I've really been trying to make the effort to read more fiction because I usually just read non-fiction biographies and uh, things like that. So I've been trying to read more novels and I found this novel, I'll be honest, I just picked it in the bookstore because it looked very good, the cover looked good and it felt very nice quality <laughs> and I read the, the blurb and it sounded interesting so I decided to get that book. It's called The Paper Palace and it's by Miranda Cowley Heller. This is her first novel 
and I'll just read to you a quick blurb. Before anyone else is awake on a perfect August morning, Al Bishop heads out for a swim in the glorious freshwater pond below the Paper Palace, the gently decaying summer camp in the backwoods of Cape Cod, where her family has spent every summer for generations. As she passes the house, Elle glances through the screen porch at the uncleared table from the dinner the previous evening. Empty wine glasses, candle wax on the tablecloth, echoes of the laughter of family and friends. Then she dives beneath the surface of the freezing water to the shocking memory of the sudden passionate encounter she had the night before, up against the wall behind the house, as her husband and mother chatted to the guests inside. So begins a story that unfolds over 24 hours and across 50 years, as decades of family legacies, love, lies, secrets, and one unspeakable incident in her childhood lead Elle to the precipice of a life-changing decision. Over the next 24 hours, Elle will have to decide between the world she has made with her much-loved husband, Peter, and the life she imagined would be hers with her childhood love, Jonas, if a tragic event hadn't changed the course of their lives forever. So, as you can see, it does sound pretty interesting. So, when I started reading this, I will tell you that it took me quite a while to get into it. What this book does, it's kind of written in the, in the present tense, but it keeps skipping back to the future every few pages, and I, f I find that pretty annoying. I kind of just want to stick to one story. But actually, once I got into it and got used to that happening, I did find it very enjoyable and I started to really enjoy the book. Also, what I will say is that it's very descriptive. You get a real sense of the environment. You can almost imagine being in this place on Cape Cod. It sounds very beautiful, serene and calm. So you really feel lost in that little world. And then as the book gets more into the middle, it really starts to get going in terms of storyline and plot and a lot of the times I was gasping with shock about some of the things that happened in this book. The ending is also really good. It kind of leaves you to decide what happened. So, yep, I will say that this was my first novel for a long time and I really enjoyed it and I would recommend it. The next one that I've been reading is this one and it's called Kitchenly 434. Again, I chose this one first because of the cover. It's got this nice little house on here and actually Kitchenly is the name of the house. So this is a novel again by a Scottish author and basically I'll just read the blurb again. It's the late 70s. The country is on the cusp of the arrival of Margaret Thatcher as Prime Minister and Marco Morell, guitarist in Fear Taker, is one of the biggest rock stars on the planet. His demanding lifestyle means he is frequently in absentia at Kitchenly Mill Race, his idyllic country retreat. And so, it is his steward, or help, Crofton Clark, who is charged with the maintenance and housekeeping of the rambling Tudorbethan gaff. When one day two young girls arrive looking for Marco clutching their copies of Fear Taker LPs, Crofton finds himself on a romantic misadventure involving a soiled carpet classic cars, unfortunate haircuts, and a ghostly night intruder, all of which leads to the tragic comic unravelling of the fantasies he's been sustained by. So I got attracted by that, again because it's based around a very beautiful setting. I like to read about beautiful places. I don't know about you, but when I'm reading a book I want to escape to a nice world, so I chose it for that. So you can see that I've read about not I haven't read a lot at all. I've got to this point in the book and I'll be very honest, nothing has happened so far and I'm finding it very, a very, very difficult read. I'm actually finding that I'm just reading the words and not taking anything in, just thinking about everything else that I've got to do and I'm really finding it a struggle to get through this book. As I say, I've literally read about a quarter of the book and not one thing has happened. It's more uh, a description of the house and the mundane life of Croft and Clark, who is the caretaker of the house, and nothing has happened. So I'm really struggling to get through it. And I'm actually thinking about just trying to give it one last shot, but if it doesn't pick up, then I'm going to have to abandon it. And I really hate to do that with a book. I always like to finish it. So maybe you want to try that one out it's kind of it's a very strange book i can't explain why it's just the way that it's written 
uh, and I did find that appealing at the beginning, but I'm really struggling. So yeah, those are my two books that I'm currently reading. So thank you so much for joining me for this short episode. I'm excited to move house next week and share that with everyone. It's going to be really cool to have a new place and to have a lot more content based around a new house. So it's going to be very exciting and I hope that you will join me. And hopefully I'll feel better soon. So yeah, back to my old self. I will see you next week on Friday as usual. Have a really great weekend and a wonderful week ahead. Bye-bye.